Happy Saturday, friends. Um, so I am well underway on the garden um, gate test quilt, and I'm using less fabrics than recommended, or not recommended, but like written for. Um, the pattern is written for seven, but like you could easily do eight or four or even two. I think this would look stunning as like a <clears throat> two or three colored quilt. Anyways, um, so I'm using four and I showed you in the previous video, I think, maybe the one before that. Um, I'm using super, super obnoxious, very vintage florals and um, I'm loving them. Um, it's, it's so much fun. So, um, I'm trying to randomize the blocks as much as possible. And I'm about to have, I have two left, but I'm about to, um, have the first color combo set done. Um, and I will kind of tell you how I'm randomizing it because my OCD brain really does not like randomizing. So I have to kind of make it a pattern in itself for my brain to be like, that makes sense. Um, okay. So obviously I'm not going to give you dimensions or anything because this pattern is not out yet, but it is super fun. So you make your strips a little bit bigger than what you need them. And, um, yeah, you put them together. Um, obviously I've not squared these down. Um, I was literally talking in my last video about how a seven and a half by seven and a half, like where would I need to use? Anyways, I have to turn these down to seven and a half by seven and a half. But once I have them pressed, um, they lay flat enough. Uh, I will be able to use my stripper tool actually, because that goes by the halves. So I'll be able to line these up and cut it one direction and then flip it and cut it the other direction, um, using my stripper tool. So that'll be really helpful. And yeah. So anyways, this is one of them. So the first fabric that I'm going through is this one right here. So basically what I did is I had 18 of triangles of every fabric because I did decide to make the baby quilt. Um, there is no border on this, but I'm going to add a border once I'm done with my photos for the designer because obviously the quilt doesn't have a border. So for my photos for her, I don't want to put borders on it. Um, but these kind of like open up like into the ether. And so it would be really cool to put a muslin border around it. And then all of these will kind of like, um, go into something. So I can show you the cover. So you see what I mean? So my like in-betweens are the muslin. And so, um, I can add a border and make it a little bit bigger. Um, which will be great. I don't want it as big as the lap quilt, but I don't want it as small as a baby quilt. I want it kind of like somewhere in the middle. Um, but anyways, what I'm doing is I took nine of each um, fabric and I prepped it on one side. So I have a whole stack of the nine of each print. So then what I'm doing is I have the remaining nine of each print. Well, now there's less because I'm almost done. I'm almost done with that first colorway, but I have nine, the other nine in piles. And what I'm doing is I am working through each color and I am doing like kind of like rotating. So a couple of these will have the same fabric. Um, and then majority of them will not, um, obviously. So, um, 
I'm just rotating them so that way it truly is kind of like random. Um, and then whenever it comes to putting them together, there is a pattern, but since mine is a little bit different and I am randomizing mine, I kind of just, I think it to put them however I want, I think. <laughs> I don't know. We'll see. Um, to a degree, but let me just show you. Um, obviously they aren't going to be pressed, but I can kind of like give you an idea of what some of the blocks look like, the combinations. So basically all of them are going to be, um, all of these are going to be the same combinations, um, at some point, like, right. If I'm rotating between them, then with this pattern, it's, it's, well, I mean, some of them would be different actually, because in this pile, this fabric is only matched with the one, but anyways, um, if you are in a kind of like rotating matching up random prints um in this kind of like manner I did this with the um with the mystery so along with the enigmatic quilt as well um it helps if you aren't a fan of being random like if it's hard for you to do random it helps um, the other thing is, is that whenever I try to be random on my own and pick fabrics randomly on my own to like match up for blocks, um, I tend to always match them with, with the other fabrics that I really like them with. Um, and so then I get to like the end <laughs> of needing to like match them. And I have a lot of the same prints. So then I get a lot of the same combos and I just, my brain has a hard time being random about it. So this is a way to like force myself to actually be random, um, with where my prints are going. And so, um, I just wanted to share that in case you also have a hard time allowing your brain to be random with um, fabric placements. One sec and I can show you this one. Let me do one of the new prints so that way I can cut off the previous ones. Oh, I haven't even started these. Never mind. <laughs> I forgot. I genuinely did one full set. I was going to chain all of them, but then I decided to chain like the nine blocks at a time. Anyways. <laughs> So I've got to do the first step for those, but I can now cut these off using a starter. So let me just show you some of the combinations with the first fabric that I did. All right. So this is that first fabric and this is with the yellow. Um, and like, this is what I was saying, like these fabrics, um, on their own, I love them together. It kind of, it's like, it's either going to look really good or it's going to look like a hot mess. I think it's actually going to look really good. Is it going to be for everybody? No, but is it going to be this like amazing vintage floral masterpiece in my mind? Yes. Um, yeah, it's going to be absolutely uh, bonkers, but I really, really, I think it's going to look great. So this is it with the yellow and like I said, I need to iron these. Um, this is the red with the blue. Love that. And then you've already seen it with the lighter floral. And so this is the red with the red. I'm, I'm not mad about it. So these are basically going to connect together like this. Um, it will do like one of each. Oh, yep. So some of them, some of them will kind of, you know, like match and stuff like that. And some of them won't. So 
I'm pretty stoked about it. I, I'm really, really liking it so far. Um, it's going to be bright. It's going to be loud. It's going to, you know, look like 1970s grandma, grandma had a bunch of leftovers and she decided to make a blanket and I am not mad about it. I'm truly not mad about it. I think it's going to be, I, I truly think it's going to be great. Um, it's my vibe and that's all that matters. Um, at the end of the day. So that is what I am working on today. Um, which it's around two o'clock. I kind of got a late start this morning. Um, I woke up really early because a tiny little lion who is obviously on the ironing board, <laughs> um, woke me up because it was breakfast time and I was up for a little bit and I was going to get started. And then my head started to hurt and I started to feel like I was going to throw up. And so I was like, I feel like I need to lay down for a little bit. And I ended up falling asleep for another like hour and a half to two hours ish. I don't know. My timeline's a little off because whenever I don't feel very good, I just, I put the phone down and I ignore things. Um, but, um, so yeah, I, I slept in a little bit and then my dad came over. He was here for a little bit. Um, we're going to go to dinner later. I do need to go run an errand. Um, and in town. And so I make it sound like I don't live in town. I do live in town, but I have to drive like five minutes away. <laughs> Egad. But, um, anyways, I have to go to one of the stores and, um, run a quick errand and then I can come back and I can sew until dinner. Um, but yeah, this one is, the only thing is, is that you have to fold like every fabric in half so that you can line, line them up on like the fold line of that centerpiece. So that's the only thing that takes a fair amount of time. It goes faster than you think, but, um, you know, whenever you're used to like zipping through stuff, it does, it does take a minute. So I'm considering sitting here and folding, pre-folding, um, all the little remaining piles. So that way I can grab a folded piece instead of stopping, folding, sewing, stopping, sewing, folding. Um, I can just grab a folded piece, pin it and sew. Um, so I don't know. I'm, I'm trying to figure out what works best for me, but this quilt, I think, feel is going to come together like super fast. So I think I'm actually about to go get ready, run that quick errand, come home, and then I can sew until my dad is like, time for dinner. And then we'll go have dinner and then I'll come back and I'll sew until I feel like going to bed. Um, and then tomorrow, I mean, depending on how far I get tomorrow, this one may be, this may be like a one day or which would be so great. I mean, Obviously, I'm doing the smallest size. So if you do a bigger size, obviously, you're going to have to, um, it'll take a little bit longer, but it's it's going pretty fast, um, which is really great. So, um, so yeah, I'm pretty excited um, because then it's just laying them out and picking, um, picking like kind of I would say like a black and white color balance, but honestly, I only have one print that's light in color. Everything else is going to pull dark gray to black whenever I make it into black and white. So it's really going to be about making sure that they're kind of all mixed up. Um, so this one, I will definitely be laying the blocks out. I didn't do that for Caddy Wampus um, because everything was pretty much identical identical except for the small um the small fussy cutted squares so I basically matched those and then um I had them in pairs and I just tried to not have duplicates in the same row and I tried not to have duplicates in the same like column like in the overall quilt but everything else it's that one was so like they were constructed uh, with where everything was in the same place. So this one, since it's so random and some of them are going to have like double the same fabric, I really need to like make sure that it's mixed up. So um, I'm going to sew all the blocks. They're going faster than I think, like than I feel like they are. So my goal 
my ultimate goal for tonight, and if I get farther, I get farther, but my ultimate goal is to get all the box sewed, pressed, and trimmed. And if anything, maybe I can lay them out, pick a layout that I like, snap a photo, because I always do that just to be sure, pick them up by row, and then maybe tomorrow morning I can put the top together. And then tomorrow starts Book Nook, and Monday starts the Heartstring Sal. So tomorrow after that, I can focus on Book Nook. Monday, I can focus on Heartstring Sal, which will be fantastic. Um, and if I need to work on them a little bit more throughout this week, I can. And then that should give me plenty of time to do the customer quilt. So, um, so yeah, even though I took basically a week, as long as I don't take like another like whole week off, I, th I think I'm pretty set to being where I want to be. Um, and then the rest of the month, I'll probably tone it down, just work on my sows. And as I get parts of those done, just like coast and maybe cross stitch because I kind of do want to cross stitch and I want to kind of also just do something different um, a little bit. So um, and then before my meeting in February, I need to prep that multi-step thing. So that'll be really fun. I need to like pull scraps for it. Um, but I already have kind of in my head the idea of where I want to go with it. So yeah, I think, I think I, I think I'm set on some of that. So that'll be really good. So yeah, that's kind of just where I am today, but I'm going to go run that errand and then I'll come back to sewing. And I also need to finish editing the video because I keep on referring it because by the time this one goes up, it will obviously be up, but I really need to finish editing that. So that way I can upload that today. Oopsies. Anyways, <laughs> lots to do. Um, yeah, I'll check in with you in just a second for you.
Hey friends, it is Sunday morning. Well, technic, it's now the afternoon, it's 12.10. Um, so something that we like to do on Sundays um, is <laughs> whenever we get up, we like to stay in bed and watch an hour of TV. Um, any show that like, you know, we haven't watched yet for the week. I was doing Sister Wives, but now Sister Wives season 17 is over, which good for good for Christine um, and Janelle and Mary. <laughs> um, but anyway, aside from that, um, this morning instead we watched a movie and um, then I fed Stella and Daniel and then I fed myself. Um, but I finished the Garden Gate quilt last night. Um, <clears throat> I made the baby size, like I said, um, I am going to add a muslin border just because I think it'll be really fun to seal up, you know, these, um, these X's of muslin, but I think it came out really, really good. This is how wide it is. So, um, it's pretty small. It's like 42 and a half by 42 and a half. So just over a yard of fabric. Um, so I think if I add borders, I can make it like a four foot by four foot. It'll just be like a very small, um, it would be really good once it's quilted to like leave on like the back of my work chair in case like my legs get cold or something like that while I'm working. So it'd be really good for like kind of like an office like cover up. Um, but yeah, I really, really love the way that it came out. Um, a lot of the blues ended up being together, the yellows, the reds, um, but I wasn't really, I don't know. I, I, I went at it very randomly and anyways, yeah, I really love the way it came out. I think all of the colors in the long run ended up working out really well together and it looks very vintage. Like the 60s and 70s want their quilt top back and I'm here for it. Um, <clears throat> so... It is Sunday. Stella is on the ironing board, giving herself a bath. And she got a little curious whenever she saw me throw that. So today is the first day. Oh my gosh. Of the book nook <laughs> uh, quilt along. So yeah, tiny, tiny pieces. I have them sitting on a piece of muslin so um this is my background color so this is all the background fabric for all 12 of these blocks um for this week we are supposed to make six i might just go ahead and make all 12 because like i said tiny tiny pieces they just they're just they make me nervous um and then these are all of the pieces for the uh bookmark hanging out of the book um which the bestseller block is the singular book block. So kind of like the cover shot book. And then the personal library block is this one. So there's 13 personal library blocks in the entire quilt. And there is 12 of the bestseller blocks. Um, then I have my different, um, ugh, itchy nose. Then I have my different, uh, inserts for the inside of the pages. Um, and then I have all of my colorful, um, book fronts and I have all of these separated by fabric. So there's tiny, tiny little pieces of these as well, like little tiny slivers of fabric to make these. Um, and so all those tiny little pieces plus these two bigger ones per each of these colors. So yeah, muslin. Um, so that way I can like pick it up and move it around. And there's even more tinier, tinier, tinier cuts in the personal library blocks. Um, 
So I'm gonna get started on this because this sal starts today. I'm really excited about it. And um, then tomorrow starts String of Hearts. So the rest of this week, I am gonna be focusing. So I am for sure working on Book Nook today. Whatever I, however long I decide to sew today, whatever I get done today, I will show you um, in the next, the clip following this one. <clears throat> and then whatever I do or don't get finished, sorry, whatever I do or don't get finished, I am going to be, um, putting it on top of its little muslin, its little muslin pieces and moving it off to the side. Um, and tomorrow I'm going to focus on string of hearts and then probably, um, and I need to look up and see what all is a part of this week's for String of Hearts because I don't remember right now. I think it's making the heart pieces. Um, I can't, I honestly can't remember, but there's four, it's four, 16, there's 32 hearts. So that might be what this week is, is the 32 hearts. And then I, anyways, I don't remember. Um, I need to look that up. Um, so tomorrow I'm going to focus on making the hearts for the string of hearts. And then, um, this week I'm going to go back and forth between the two until I get them finished so I can take my photos and post them. Now, if I finish at least six of these blocks today, if I do end up finishing six of them, I'm going to go ahead and like post a photo, um, of it and <clears throat> that'll be great um and then but yeah so this this quilt along the book note quilt along i don't think is doing prizes or drawings or anything but the string of hearts one is and i know that i've already won i don't know if you can win multiple times but um it is fun keeping on top of a sow with everyone um if you're able and so um yeah that to me is really fun. But sometime this week, also early in the week, I wanna cut out for the customer quilt and probably Wednesday or Thursday, I'll switch my priority to getting that put together before the weekend. Um, so that way, hopefully, as I drive back through um, to come home on Monday, I can drop that off at the quilt shop and have another thing like checked off my list. So I'm going to get going on the bestseller blocks today and I might check in more frequently, but, um, regardless, there will be a check-in at the end of today. I promise this time. Um, but I might check in before then. I don't know. Um, I think we're going to just turn on some movies and just have a day of it. So I'll see you in the next clip. Okay, it is Sunday evening. Wow, I look crazy. It's 5.30. I finished these around 4.45 or so, but I decided that on the little bookmark on the bestsellers, oh, I also finished all 12, that I decided on the little bookmarks of the bestseller block, I would actually embroider one of my favorite books. Um, these are obviously not all of my favorite books. Some of my favorite books are a bit intense and I wanted to kind of keep this like light and fun for the most part. Um, so in the light pink floral, we have Little Women. Obviously I have not embroidered these, but it did take me some time. So this is with a friction pin, um, which I've already put up. Um, but friction pens are by Pilot. And whenever you go over these with your iron, the ink goes away. Um, I have heard that sometimes the ink comes back um, and it can leave kind of like an impression, which I had to erase 
apart and kind of like redraw it because I didn't like something about it. And um, it did do that, but I have a, like, I feel like once it's quilted and all put together, like whenever you wash it, it won't be an issue. I don't know. Anyways, it's a risk that I'm willing to take, but we have Little Women for this one. Pollyanna, truly one of like my favorite books and movies. So good. <clears throat> We have a little princess on one of the darker pinks and to kill a mockingbird. So that one's a little bit of a heavier book, but I was also debating on putting like Diary of Anne Frank and Night and the Divine Comedy and things like that. So like books that I truly, really like that are classics. Um, but yeah, I felt like this one might be like the least heavy um, and I debated on not doing this one, but I was like, you know what? It's one of the few books that I've read like more than seven times and I was only required to read it twice in school. It is absolutely one of my favorites. Um, also I could have put The Handmaid's Tale, but again, a little too heavy. Um, <laughs> on the Swan fabrics, we have Romeo and Juliet. I mean, how is this not perfect for Romeo and Juliet? It's just so romantic and then for the second, um, for the second swan fabric, we have The Secret Garden. This book is great, but I also really love the movies. And I am a fan of the movie from the 90s because I grew up with that one. But also my Aunt Julie, whenever I was really young, and I still have it actually. And I bought it on DVD. I found a DVD version of the Secret Garden version that she gave me on VHS whenever I was little. And it wasn't the 90s version. It was, I think, this from the 70s. And it was actually, like, made by British actors. <laughs> Anyways, so good. It was made a long, long time ago. I think it is a better version than the 90s, but... I like both. Anyways, I thought this one was also perfect for the Secret Garden. For the light blue, I decided to do Little House on the Prairie because, I don't know, it just kind of went with the vibe of like some of like their outfits, in my opinion. Um, <clears throat> like as they're described in the book and also in the show. Um, I'm a huge fan of both. I've read the entire series and... I'm on season seven because I paused watching it for a little while to finish a different show. Anyways, that's, that's a whole different conversation. The second one in the light blue is the importance of being earnest. I remember reading this one and anyways, I think it's funny, but I love like witty, satire um, quick wit, British humor. It's not for everyone, but I really liked it. So I'm making it into a book. Um, the two owl prints, these will make a lot of sense as to why I picked the owl fabrics for them, but the Chronicles of Narnia, there's a lot of talking animals in the Chronicles, Chronicles of Narnia, and I don't know, I just get the vibe of the Chronicles from this one. And then, of course, Harry Potter. So I do have, you know, a little bit of a newer book in here, but it's epic. It's one of my favorites. I have a Harry Potter tattoo. I could not include Harry Potter. Um, and I didn't pick a specific one. I literally just wrote Harry Potter. <laughs> so it's all of them. This book is thick. Um, <laughs> for the, I think honestly, this is one of, aside from, so I think I could honestly pick out what my three favorite fabrics are if I had to pick a top three out of my six fabrics but I truly love them all. But this one is probably my favorite. Um, it's the dark colored daisies. So I put two of my absolute favorites on this one as well. Um, but also I tried to pick titles that kind of vibed with that fabric. I tried. Um, anyways, first one is Heidi. Love this book. But I also love pretty much every, well, I haven't seen every movie version of it. But I love the 90s, um, the 90s version with Noli Thornton, and I love the Shirley Temple version. So personally, I think those are the two best ones. 
Anyways, Heidi. And finally, couldn't leave this one out, Anne of Green Gables. Obviously, you have to have it on the darker green with the daisies. It This just screams Anne, in my opinion. So I am going to find... Um, I'm not going to stitch them in black. Um, I feel like that would be a little bit too stark. And I'm probably going to stitch them with two strands of embroidery floss. Um, I feel like three would be too th thick. Obviously, six would. And I think one would be too thin. So I think I'm going to do two. But I think I'm going to do like a dark brown. I don't know. I don't want to do black. I think it would be a little too harsh. Um, I don't know. I'm kind of thinking something like an 838, but I'm also tempted to maybe use like a 930. Um, so like kind of like a blue color that would blend really well with the background and some of the prints. Um, yeah. So I'm going to look through my floss box the nice thing about this is week one and week two of this quilt along are these blocks. So getting them all done in one go gives me a break on one of my quilt alongs for at least two weeks now because I finished all of them on day one of this week. But the other thing is, is that it's going to allow me to focus on embroidering these so I feel like, and I'm just going to do simple backstitch. Um, I don't feel like adding any little florals or anything or making it super flowery. I genuinely just want it to be the names. And then once I embroider them, I will hit this with the iron to make the lines and the written uh, text go away. So that way it's just the, it's just the embroidery um that's left <clears throat> but yeah I don't know I'm thinking like somewhere between 9 30 and 9 32 or like I said like an 8 38 something like that so either a dark brown or kind of like that denim blue color in the 900s um I think it'll really complement a lot of these fabrics really well um, if I do that, um, and not make it super stark. So kind of like this kind of color or kind of the color that it shows up, the friction pin shows up on this gold color. Um, so if you really want to know my favorite prints, I really love this print. Um, there's just something so sweet about it. I really, really, really love the swans. Like, these florals are amazing. I love how there's stars on it as well. Um, some of them have stars and then some of them don't have stars. So, um, <clears throat> and then I really love the dark daisies. But honestly, this entire fabric collection, all of the main books, and I know that I said this back whenever I first started talking about the book, um, the book nook quilt along in December. Uh, or actually, no, late November. My bad. I know that I talked about this. All of the main prints for the books are from the same line by Sharon Holland from Art Gallery. It's called Willow. You can still find it. The backing that I got for this is going to be flannel, and it's also from the line. It's, um, it's actually this print, but with a light cream background, and the florals are in color, um, instead of this kind of like tone on tone in the dark pink. Um, this background, I can't remember the name of it. It's, it's, I think something pebble. And then I got this gold to make all the bookmarks match because in the pattern, you're supposed to kind of like play with the different fabrics and interchange the bookmarks. I'm really glad now that I want to embroider actual titles on here that I made them all the gold. And then all of the pages fabric is from different different collections, but they're really nice, low volume prints. So I'm just gonna give you an up close of the different ones. There's only four. So just some really nice low volume. And so yeah, 
in two weeks, I will be able to get back to this one. Um, obviously throughout this week, I will show you whenever I get some embroidered, but for the rest of tonight, I have watched three movies today. This morning, because I said, you know, we watched a movie, we said, or instead of watching a TV show, we watched a movie and we watched She Said, I think that's what it's called. Um, it's on Peacock and it's about the two journalists trying to break the story about um, Henry Weinstein. Um, really good. I, whenever I was working on these, I watched two movies this afternoon while I've been sewing and writing the different books on the bookmark. And I watched a 90s classic crush with Alicia Silverstone. And I can't remember his name. I think it's Kevin something, but he was in Men in Tights. Great movie. She was absolutely bonkers in that. Um, and then I think it's, I think was that her first film? Because then she was in the Aerosmith music video and then she did Clueless. I, I think that was one of her, if not her first film, one of her first films before she landed Clueless and literally became a household name. Um, anyways, I digress. Great film. Watched that. And then because I hadn't ever seen it, and it was also on Peacock. All three of these are on Peacock, by the way. I watched Winter's Bone with uh, Jennifer Lawrence. Really good movie. Boring as hell. Like, it took... It was just too slow and so monotoned. And it was just... It was really good. I liked the plot. I like how it ended. All of that. It was just boring as hell. So watch it if you're really super bored or if you're working on something and you need to concentrate and you don't have to pay as much attention. Although it would have been nice to have followed up Crush with something a little bit more along the same lines of, you know, like thriller or comedy or something. Anyways, so I am done sitting here though. I could get started on String of Hearts, but honestly, I just want to save that for tomorrow. And I'm going to do a couple of things, like a couple little chores, feed the cats. Although Stella right now is inside of the puff quilt sleeping and Daniel is laying next to her, but on top. Um, but yeah, I'm going to pick a thread. I'm going to start working on these because the sooner I get them done, the sooner they're done, right? Um, <laughs> and I don't think they'll take very long. I'm just doing simple backstitch. Um, tomorrow will be String of Hearts. So either later tonight, I'll do a check-in with how many of these I got done or tomorrow I'll let you know um, whenever we talk about String of Hearts. But I am closing up shop in here for the night which I just, I think is a really good idea. I need to, I feel now like I'm caught up. Um, you know, like I got all of these done. I truly, if I wasn't doing this, I would be done with this whole quilt along this one for the next two weeks, the rest of this week and next week. Um, so string of hearts starts tomorrow. I, I have a lot of cutting and like piecing things together because I'm making a scrappy background, not scrappy hearts. So that's going to be kind of, it's going to take some time. So I feel like I'm in a good spot that maybe Tuesday I can cut out the customer quilt, knock it out because I've heard that that's a really simple pattern because I have yet to make the swoon quilt. I only have the pattern. And then whatever time I need left to finish the string of hearts um, that I don't get done tomorrow for whatever week three is, I'll finish that throughout the rest of this, this week. And then next week I can finish this up and work on week four of string of hearts. So I finally feel kind of like it feels a little bit calmer, like it's calming down and that feels really, really, really nice and like good um, for me. And yeah, 
anyways, I will check in in the next clip either way later tonight or tomorrow. Let's lean more towards tomorrow, but you never know. So I'll see you in the next clip. Happy Monday, everyone. Wow. This looks amazing. I have been up for, I don't know, a little while. I slept in a little bit, but nothing like super crazy. Um, I have been sewing for about an hour and a half on the String of Hearts Sal. Um, this is going to, I feel like it's going to take me for forever. Um, mostly because I'm making a scrappy back. So, um, I had some of the pieces cut. I had the hearts cut out. So I had all the muslin cut out for the hearts, but all of my background fabric is just literally sitting here as a pile of scraps of different prints from the original Maureen McCormick, um, a blooming bunch line. Um, because what else am I going to do with all of this 60s, 70s floral fabric? There's a lot. I'm probably still going to have some of it left over by the end of this. And um, I've pulled, these are the five that I bought as yardages to um, make the like the throw pillows and the binding and all that kind of stuff to the really big quilt. So these five I'm like holding out for like the borders and things like that. So I'm holding out on these um, also because they are big cuts. If there is some left, um, I can, I don't know, make a tote bag or something. I don't know. I just, I'm trying to use up, this is how much I have. Literally. Um, I mean, like, obviously I'm, I'm showing it to you, which is the actual definition of literal. Um, so I have all of these scraps, all of this, this is the entire collection. Plus I'm setting aside as I'm cutting, I'm setting aside sizes that I think will work with the next size down of hearts. Anyways, so it's kind of a process because in between sewing, I'm also cutting the pieces that I need. So um, this is going to be a lengthy process. This is most likely, I would be shocked if I get all 40 of the hearts made today. I would be flabbergasted to be quite fair and honest. But in the last hour and a half, what I have done is on half of the larger hearts. So I'm starting with the larger ones also because um, in the larger ones, in the largest diagonal, like this chunk right here, this piece down here, I can get a square for a smaller one. But I can't, if I butcher up some of these pieces too much, right, um, then it'll be harder for me to get the larger cuts. So I'm whittling them down based on the sizes that I need. Um, I needed to put that aside. Um, so that's kind of where I'm at. Um, so I split up the heart fabric into two piles. So there's 20 of each of these sizes. So there's 20 for the smaller one, 20 for the second to smallest, second largest, and then 20 um, heart pieces for the largest. So I split them into two because you put, um, you snowball the top two corners of each one. And then the larger one, you do half, half of them go one direction, half of them go another direction. So for 10 of them, I have one corner done. And for 10 of them, I have half of the heart ready. So um, it is going to look super cool. I am really loving the way that this is going to look. They're all going to be so unique and different, but it is taking time. So something that I'm going to do while making this today is after I finish a complete set of hearts, I'm going to go on a walk. It's going to be at least a 30 minute to an hour walk and I'm going to go on a walk 
in between every single set of hearts. Um, I'm thinking at the rate that I'm going, it's going to be almost three hours per set. Obviously, I'm getting up a little bit in between to um, do some random stuff around the house, go to the bathroom and all that kind of stuff. But I'm purposely going to go on a walk after I fully complete a set, which means completely finish it to this level and then sew them together and actually make the heart block. Um, so yeah, I think every set is going to take roughly three hours. So that'll be really nice to get out of the house. Um, I, yeah, there's no way I'm going to get through all of these today. So I'm, my goal would be to at least, at least get through completely two sets. So the largest set and the second to largest. And then throughout this week, if I could, you know, like one day after work, complete the second to smallest, and then one day complete the smallest, I would be ecstatic. Um, and then that would be all the hearts for this week done. And then I also still want to do the customer's quilt. So how far did I get on my book nook out yesterday? Well, <laughs> um, I completed all of the blocks. So I completed all of them. Um, I wrote the names on all of them. And yeah, you can see the little lines. Um, so I did embroider them. <clears throat> They're a little, they look messier in photos and on camera than they do in person. They're really easy to read in person. Um, but I think it's just the contrast with like the lights and stuff. But I ended up going with thread 926. So um, in that denim blue range in the 900s, is what I was shooting for. I pulled it. I also looked at a brown, but the blue just looks so nice. It pulls really nice with this gold and with all of the fabric colors, which I'll show you here in just a second. But out of the 12, I got nine of them completed. Yes, I have three left to stitch, but I only have um, five of them are in the other room. Um, because I ironed these and took some photos of them and then I went back into my room. I stitched two more before I ended up passing out. So they're still in the room. They haven't been re-ironed um, and all of that. So I'll show you those later today. Um, so that is another goal of mine is throughout this week. I would love to finish those. They actually went a lot faster than I thought that they would. Yes, iron, we get it. You want to cool off now. Great. So we have the Heidi block. We have the Pollyanna block. See, they're looking, they're easier to read than it seems. The Secret Garden. To Kill a Mockingbird. The Importance of Being Earnest got done. Harry Potter. And this one I did change it just a tiny bit. I put one through seven at the bottom um, just because there was a lot of space and I felt like it. Um, and then this is Little House on the Prairie. So I also last night got... Or the other two that I got done. Oh my gosh, I don't even remember. I know that I have the Chronicles of Narnia left. I have Romeo and Juliet left, and I have I don't remember. But I only have three left. So that's really nice. Um yeah, I, I love the way these turned out. I think they look so stunning. I just, I love them. And I love how these fabrics played out. So, um, yeah, 
I have once the embroidery is done I basically have two weeks off from this one because all 12 of my blocks are done now that's not to say because um this week again week three of string of hearts I definitely want to get all the heart blocks done week four is adding the backgrounds and making them into the strings and then it's doing the rest of the background um so again it's going to be piecemealing a lot of this together um like making longer strips and really making it piecey and then cutting it down again so um you know <laughs> like McKenna said in a comment in my last one I buy a lot of fabric I break it down into smaller pieces I sew it all back together and then I cut it again and then put it back together again <laughs> hence a quilt. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm making it super scrappy. I might even make it wonky. I don't know yet, but I am going to piecemeal as much of this collection as possible to also use as much of it as possible. Um, so hearts are my focus for this week because they are going to take me eons. Once it gets to like the in-betweens, like the sashing and things like that, these are going to be easier to work with because I'll just take whatever's left that is big chunks and they will become the sashing or I can kind of like piece meal them together to make a sashing and that's going to be a lot more fun because it's literally just going to be finding pieces that are similar in size, sewing them together and then cutting them down and being kind of crazy about it and I'm absolutely fun and fine with that because I think it's this fabric should be fun and exciting, in my opinion. And I love this project for that. I've never done a scrappy back. And so I am going to live it up. And it's going to look absolutely insane. And I'm excited. Um, the other thing, again, is the customer quilt. So if I don't get to the other three of these um, throughout this week, I'll be fine with that because I can... I don't know, take them with me this weekend, or I can even wait and finish them next week whenever I have a little bit more breathing room with this sal and the customer quilt being done. So it just kind of depends, but they're also sitting next to my bed. So if I just like work on it like 30 minutes at the end of every day, I'll definitely have them done before the end of today. And I typically lay in bed for at least 30 minutes to an hour at the end of the day, just watching TV. So I might as well, while I use my piranha mat and piranha pillow, I might as well just do that. So that is where I'm at with the book nook sal. All of my blocks are made for the next two weeks. I'm just doing extra because I don't know. Sparked in my head. I have been thinking about it for a while, but I like fully committed and decided to do it like literally yesterday. Um, so that's what I'm working on and doing with the hearts. So, um, I have one in this other set of 10. I have one of the big ones on. And then, like I said, all of them have a small corner. So now I am going to cut more. I need 10 more of this size corner. I need 10 more of them. So I'm going to be cutting corners and then I'm going to be cutting, I need nine more big corners. So I have to scrounge around in here and find scraps big enough. Like you would think this one is big enough, but it's actually, it's big enough for a corner. It's not big enough for the big corner. So yeah, that is kind of the longest part of this is finding the scraps big enough. And I do have bigger scraps. Don't get me wrong. I have plenty of bigger scraps. But to do that, I need to take an entire like four inch chunk of this. And this would be really good for like sashing and stuff if I cut it this way. So I just have to kind of like play around um, and find some of the better ways to utilize my fabric is all that it is. And so hence why I'm going to be sitting here for chunks of time and my legs are going to get all crampy and I'm just focusing on this today and um, because I have the whole day to focus on it. So therefore, 
30 minute to an hour long walk in between each set of hearts. So the next check-in, um, unless I just feel like getting on here in between sets really fast and showing them, I might do just like a final update at the end of the day or yeah, I might hop in and out and show you like heart sets before or after I go on my walk. So, um, yeah, I will check in in the next clip. Hey everyone. So it is Friday afternoon, January 20th. And I did a couple of things here and there, but I did take a couple of days off from sewing. So let me just show you how far I've gotten and what I have left. Um, have I gotten the customer quote cut out? No, I have not. Have I finished my hearts? No, I have not. Um, and my book nook books, I'm on my last one for embroidering them. Um, but I have made a lot of progress on my string of hearts. Um, but I do have one set of hearts left to make, um, and one set to finish. I just have to put them together and then re-iron them. So <clears throat> I took the rest of the day off, not to sew, like there's just this week has been interesting with work and good and bad. It'll be fine, but it's been a little mental gymnastics. So um, I just asked my boss, I was like, can I just have the rest of today off? Um, and he said, yes. So um, today or the rest of today, um, aside from taking a walk, which it is like, low 40s raining right now so my walk is going to be inside of my house listening to an audiobook um because as much as I don't mind walking in the rain I can walk in my house um for the same amount of time and try to not make myself sick um on purpose so we're gonna go with that route but anyways um, so I will be like walking in between doing sewing and stuff because that was a really good trick last weekend. It one kept me motivated to get more done, but also two, it was, it was actually really nice to like get a break and like get a walk in and get my steps in. And as much as I want to sit here and only do sewing for a gazillion hours at a time, it was really, really, really nice to break it up. So um, if you're someone who doesn't get as many steps in as you would like, or that is, or you're trying to also increase your activity, maybe challenge yourself like every X amount of blocks or in this case was every size of heart block that I got done. Um, I went for a little 30 minute walk. So, um, try maybe challenging yourself like that. If that's something that you've been trying to do better at. Okay. So I, I can't remember, um, because I obviously did not go back and watch my last clip to find out how much I had shown you or talked to you. Um, but I'm just going to go ahead and show you where all the hearts are at. Um, so this is the largest size of the hearts. I love how random they are. I, I cannot wait to start working on the backgrounds um, or like the bigger chunks of background. Um, I think it's going to be so much fun. Um, so next week, so this week it's making all the hearts. Next week, not on this size, because this is the largest size, but on the next three, there's pieces that you put on this on the sides to make it the same width. And then there's in between pieces to make the column um, between the hearts. So I have plenty of big scraps of fabric to make those bigger chunks and stuff, but it's going to be the bigger... Um, I also with the yardage, I have plenty of fabric to also make like the really long like borders at towards the um towards the end of this sew along. But what I'm thinking about doing is making it very random pieced um pieced for like even the bigger borders. And I might save the yardage and piece together the backing because I think that would just be really fun. Um so yeah, I have a couple of ideas going in my head, but 
I am trying to use as much of this fabric as absolutely possible, but I have a feeling I'm still going to have a fair amount of it left. Like, I truly feel like I'm going to still have a fair amount of it left, which is fine, but whatever I have left, I might just cut it up into charms and mini charms and like whenever her second collection comes out getting a little bit of it and making something with both collections and then hopefully calling it a day um as much as I love this fabric collection I how many more things I don't know how many more things I can make with this um like I just it feels like I'm gonna every time I like try to use more of it it feels like I'm gonna use way more of it than I do and I just have this massive stack and I just, I genuinely just don't know what to do with it. Um, so anyways, we've got the large hearts. We've got the second, second to largest hearts because there's four sizes. Um, super cute. I love these. Love them. Um, I haven't, all I still have are the small ones, um, the centers. I've still got to like, cut all of the all of the background pieces for it because um as I said I'm cutting those as I go um and then these are the second to smallest so I just have to sew them together and um I wanted to put like one little easter egg for myself in this quilt um I kind of am regretting that I didn't do one of every size and just make like one column one side of the quilt one column all pink um hearts but um so I'm gonna make myself one heart easter egg in the whole quilt that all of the prints directly around the heart are pink so even the side pieces I'm gonna do pink for this one um and possibly also like the top and bottom so there's like one singular super pink heart um so for this one I picked all pink background fabrics and same for this one. So, um, yeah, I just thought that would be really fun. And so in the quilt, there will be one single fully surrounded pink on pink heart. So I think that'd be really cute. So I have to sew these together and then do, um, the final size, the small size, and then I can take photos or videos or whatever I want to do and I can post them to be in the drawing. Um, and then um next week I will add next week is adding the sides to the smaller ones and then putting putting them in their columns so making our there's four eight yeah eight no five ten my gosh making our ten columns okay wow math it's hard Okay. So, um, so yeah, my goal for tonight and tomorrow, because I think, yeah, I don't think I'm going to be able to sew most of Sunday and half of Monday. So, um, tomorrow or yeah, today and tomorrow, this is what I want to get done. I want to get the hearts done so that way I can post it. Because I don't know what she's what days of the week she's counting as the weeks for the for the stitch along or the quilt along. Um and I also need to post my book nook. So um I have one left to do. So I'm probably gonna just knock this one out so I can go ahead and post that and then work the rest of the evening on the hearts. So I have one left to do. I have Romeo and Juliet, but I think they came out really well. They don't show up as well. Um, on camera probably because of the lights and things um, but they are really easy to read in person so that's Chronicles of Narnia Little Women A Little Princess Anne of Green Gables it sounds so icy outside um, Heidi Pollyanna the Secret Garden, To Kill a Mockingbird, The Importance of Being Earnest, Harry Potter, and Little House on the Prairie. So, all of these are ready. 
I just have number 12. And so then I am done with Book Nook for a whole nother week unless I get caught up with the hearts as well and get the customer quilt done and I just feel like moving on, you know, um, and getting stuff done early. Um, so yeah, I have big goals and plans for tonight. So finish stitching this, get those ready, post it, get my hearts finished. And then I would love to finally get the customer quilt put out or cut out. So that way tomorrow is my embroidery bee. So I will probably go for at least a little while and take a cross stitch. I really want to get my temperature sows finished. I was going to say caught up, but finished because 2022 is over, um, which I know that I won't get them fully caught up, but I can work on it at Embroidery Bee. Um, at least finish the high or the low footprints because those don't take very long. Um, so then it's just the window for both of them, which I'm doing full coverage because it was on black. So I, anyways, it's a lot of stitching. So, um, if I can at least get all of the temperatures completed and just have, you know, the window and like work on that, that would be fantastic. And then, um, like I said, I planned on doing the averages for Daniel so, um, yeah, at some point I'm going to restart it, but I won't have to like pause and wait. I can literally just work on it whenever I want to. Um, so I might take that to embroidery B and I might also take that with me Sunday. So that way I can still be productive and work on something. Um, but then tomorrow, whenever I get back from embroidery B, if I get what I want achieved tonight done, or the rest of today. It's two in the afternoon. Um, I'm hopefully going to put together the customer quilt tomorrow night. So I would love to get this stuff done, which is very easily plausible if I don't just like go veg out for a little while. Um, I can get it cut and then tomorrow I can put together that quilt because I've been told it goes together really quickly. So it'd be really nice to get that one done. So that way, Monday, I can drop it off on my way back through town. So that's kind of like where my goals are and where I ended up for the week. Um, I vlogged as much as I possibly could this week, but with some stuff going on that I don't know enough, honestly, to even talk about it, it may be a really good opportunity. It may not be a really good opportunity. I've put it out there kind of like what my thoughts um, are and where I'm at with that. And so we'll see. Um, so it could be good. It could, it, it could be, it could be good and it could just not happen and I'll still be fine. So, um, as vague as I'm going to get, I guess. Um, but I genuinely, I just don't have enough information to say more than that. That is what it is. There's a possible job opportunity, but it might not financially make any sense. So it may not be the best opportunity and it may be a good opportunity for somebody else. So basically that's it. Um, so anyways, I just had a lot going on in my brain. So the little bit that I did work on, I just didn't record it. So anyways, I'm going to go ahead and end this one so that way I can finish this and I can edit this video, get it posted, or like start trying to post it because that sometimes seems to take forever. Um, and, and then I'll just go ahead and start recording for next week's video. So anyways, thank y'all so much for sticking around. I'm glad that you're enjoying the quilts. I finally feel like I'm in a groove. A couple of my friends, um, and I don't know if they're on here or not, but they're on Instagram. But a couple of my quilty friends slash stitchy friends are also doing the scrappy spools. And they actually started this month. I didn't think I could start this month because I felt really overwhelmed because I kind of made a situation for myself, right? I, I, 
I committed to too much, but I mean, I'm, I'm accomplishing it. So it's great. I just don't think it would be, I don't think it would behoove me to start scrappy spools until February and I'll just do double work in February. Um, which is fine. Um, and then I also, at some point in the next two weeks, I need to prep my block for my schoolhouse session um, at my Quilt Guild meeting next month. And I also went and picked up UFO papers and I got six more turned into me. So it's really exciting. It's not a whole lot of people, but it's already more than last year. And that's really exciting for me. And I know that more people are going to be turning theirs in. So I'm pretty excited. Apparently the buzz is um, according to the shop owner and a couple other guild members, apparently the buzz is people are really liking how I'm wanting to run it this year. So that makes me feel really good. So, um, yeah, just a lot going on, but I will see y'all in the next video. Thank y'all so much for being around and enjoying everything. If you have any questions or if you want to just chat in the comments, please let's do it. Um, I love it. Um, and if you want to follow me on Instagram, it's where you see more of the photos and what's going on, um, in stories, um, more as it's happening. So, um, obviously stories, duh, it's as it's happening. Anyways, I've had, I've had a day, I've had a week and I'm, my brain fog is like at max capacity, I think. So I'm going to go do this and cuddle with the cats for a little bit and watch something while I edit. And I'll see you all in the next one. Bye, everyone. Love ya.